Today, we have our friends and partners at Nuveen hosting the call today to share what your plan sponsors need to do need to know about lifetime income. We have Jessica Fox leading the call, and she is Nuveen's head of strategic accounts for Nuveen's retirement investing. So she leads a team of dedicated retirement investing professionals focused on meeting the growing demands for Nuveen investment and the uh, TL lifetime income solutions in the defined contribution marketplace. So you're definitely in great hands today. <laughs> um, so I will go ahead and pass it over to you, Jessica. Thank you so much, Leah. And it's a pleasure to be with you all here this morning, afternoon, depending on where you are in the country. Uh, I'm excited to jump in with you on one of my very favorite topics, uh, digging into all things about lifetime income. And, you know, as we've seen in the market, we're continuing to see a number of various offerings and uh, topics that you can't enter into a conference these days uh, without recognizing the importance of this topic and discussion. Um, and in fact, even just stepping out of um, the RPAG uh, 20th anniversary celebration, it was certainly a hot topic at the conference as well. Um, so for those who aren't able to join us in person, excited to be able to deliver that uh, similar messaging here with you today. Um, so what are we going to talk about over the next 30 minutes or so, we are going to jump into a number of things. We are going to talk about the shifting retirement landscape uh, that is ahead of us here in the United States. We will touch a little bit on why plan sponsors offer a retirement plan in the first place. Uh, we'll then take a little bit of a deeper dive into um, the crux of it of really where these lifetime income solutions are panning out in that broader landscape, thinking about uh, liquidity on through longevity. And then arguably, I think the most important piece of it is the significance and the role that you as the advisor play in helping to drive the message, the education, and the engagement for the participants and the plan sponsors that we serve. And so with that, we will jump right into it. Uh, as Leah mentioned, we have the Q&A function um, up and running for the discussion. I would love for this to be as interactive as possible. So please do send your questions our way um, as the topics come up and Leah will be sure to be monitoring that on our behalf. So digging into understanding of the U.S. retirement saving system today, if we take a look back and we think about what that landscape looked like back in the 1970s, Upwards of 70% of plan sponsors in the private market had access to a defined benefit plan. Fast forward to today, and that number has dropped to just 12% of the private market being served by defined benefit plans, which is a dramatic shift in what we're seeing. And with the introduction of the defined contribution plan, we saw that really the onus was starting to be put from plan sponsor onto the participant to figure out how they were going to go about saving for themselves with what was a supplemental savings plan um, turned into really what has become largely the main savings vehicle for most Americans out there. Then we think about what's happened from the perspective of longevity. And so if we look at the statistics that are tied to a couple that is living today, there is a almost 75, 74% chance that one out of two people in that couple are going to live to age 90 if they have made it to age 65. Oftentimes when people think about mortality and longevity, some of those two things get confused. But if a couple has actually made it to age 65, the likelihood that they are going to live to age 90 at that 74% for one of the two, and even further exacerbated, we see that there's a 25% chance that one in that couple would live to age 95 or later. And so if we think about that retirement age sitting somewhere between 65 to 67, we're talking about upwards of 30 plus years that people need to be prepared to ensure that their income will last. And what we've seen based off of the most recent statistics coming out is that 40% of US households are concerned that they run the risk of running out of money in retirement. And so what this really helps to exacerbate for us is that this retirement crisis is real and that we have something that we need to solve for. If we look at some of those statistics, and I mentioned the private sector workers, the piece of it that has you know come into play is looking at who has access to these plans. 
And that is really the first entree, if you will, into saving for retirement. Um, and we think about the people who already have access to plans and their ability to save. But if we look at this private sector, half, almost half lacked access to that employer-sponsored retirement plan. And as we look at the various demographics that are out there, 64% of Hispanic workers, 53% of Black workers, 78% of workers are at firms with fewer than 10 employees. And we've seen some shift in um, some of the legislative landscape to address this, but there is a huge disparity in those folks that do not even have access today to a plans that we need to solve for. And then we couple that with what's happening from the overall social security beneficiaries and what they're projected to see by way of realized uh, benefits as it sits today. Um, if nothing changes, there is estimated to be a 20% across the board benefit cut by 2033. So we know that something has to change. And then we think about, too, from the broader diversity lens, with women retiring with less than 30 per, or with 30% less income than men, we really have a lot here that we need to work with to ensure that we can get everybody to and through retirement. Now, we talk about these three major gaps that we're facing. So we've talked about this coverage gap, again, reflecting on what we just covered, that there's upwards of 50% that don't even have access to a plan. So we need to solve for that piece of it. And then if we think about the people who do have access to plans, we know that they're simply not saving enough. And we've seen things come into play like auto escalation features, auto contribution features, which have certainly helped. Um, but we're not fully there yet. So people still continue need, needing to accumulate benefits within their plan. And then we also think about what is the guarantee gap and that those people who are working so hard and looking to save their money throughout retirement are really not confident that they are going to be in a place to have that retire or that income last for them for the entirety of their retired years. Now, we saw that there was wide bipartisan support coming out of Washington to help to address uh, some of these issues that we've seen by way of the various gaps that I just mentioned. Um, and so with both the SECURE Act 1 and 2 um, coming to bear, so back in uh, December of 2019, we saw the passing of the SECURE Act 1, um, which was a huge, huge opportunity um, by way of lifetime income and that opening up for uh, many more Americans to be able to save in the space. As we think about that, what happened? Well, we got the passage of this that we'd been waiting so very long for, and then fast forward and COVID came about. And so we were a little bit sidetracked by what we saw with the CARES Act, um, work from home and thinking about how that more broadly impacted uh, the workplace. And um, we lost sight of some of the benefits that really came out of the secure one, um, most notably the safe harbor provision for selection of annuity providers in this space um, for the ability to add um, more portability um, by way of distributable events from retirement plans in order to port that benefit should a plan sponsor no longer offer um, that retirement savings within their plan, um, as well as sharing out some of the projected lifetime income illustrations for what is um, more broadly available um, in the marketplace as far as what a, 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 um, a participant would see by way of their statements to give them an estimate and really make people think about from the perspective of your day-to-day -day paycheck, how much money are you really thinking about taking home on that month-to-month -month basis to meet those needs that you have to cover your fixed expenses and really putting it in the framework of how we think about paying for our bills. All of that to say that we are really at a place right now where what we're calling for uh, uh, at the Nuveen team is a pension reinvention. So as we think about almost half of those Americans being fearful of running out of money in retirement as their biggest concern, we also want to think about what the participants are saying. And based off of a number of studies that have been done, uh, you know, first coming from the AARP, uh, it said that 70 percent of workers would choose to work for or stay with a company that offered access to a guaranteed lifetime income benefit. And then you think about that and couple it with this additional statistic that 75% of people prefer income stability over principal protection. And so we think about how that comes into play, things like loss aversion. People are much more fearful of running out of the money or losing something um, than to think about what they're going to gain. So that income stability comes into play 
Um, and then we, you know, also think about the studies that are coming out of EBRI and that 78% express interest in rolling some or all of their money from a retirement plan to a guaranteed lifetime income plan or product um, that would be available to them at the time of retirement. Further stressing from the participant lens, how important this is for them to ensure that they've got that income stability when they think about working through their um, their careers and getting to this place of trying to make sure that they can retire with dignity. That brings us to thinking through just some of the broader considerations as it relates to why is a plan sponsor offering a retirement plan to their participants in the first place? And what we've come to see and particularly exacerbated, um, as I mentioned during uh, what we saw come out of COVID, is that back in 2019, 63% of, uh, of our, our plan sponsors said that they were offering a benefit um, in the plan simply because a retirement benefit in their plan simply because it was the right thing to do. Um, and now you take a, a fast forward to 2021, that number's dropped by 14% to just 49% saying that they're offering a retirement benefit simply because it's the right thing to do. And today they're really thinking about it uh, from a lens of how can it help us to attract and retain talent into our organization? So we saw that statistic back in 2019, sitting on or around 30%, uh, fast forward to 2021, and that had increased to 45%, um, up 15 from from where it stood. And so it really stresses the importance of what we're seeing coming out of the ability to attract and retain talent in the marketplace. And what we can tell is that there has certainly been um, a big impetus of uh, change in the workforce. And so as we think about what came from COVID as an example, if you reflect back, and I was like, and I know many of us don't want to even think about what it used to be like back then, um, but we had this mass exodus that took place from the workplace um, in that great resignation that we saw. Uh, and I was, yeah, I'm still floored to see the statistics, but 3.6 million people, 3.6 million people opted to quit their jobs in October of 2023. So they voluntarily are leaving the workforce. And if we think about that, some of the statistics that have come out um, in this one in particular from HubSpot um, is thinking about that productivity and what does that exodus from the workforce do by way of lost productivity annually for that workforce? Well, what we saw was that there was $1.8 trillion that was associated in that lost productivity for the exodus from the workplace. Um, and when we're thinking about what it means to actually have to replace somebody if they've left the workforce, it is about 40% of an employee's base salary to go about hiring a new employee with benefits for a similar type of role. And then we couple that with thinking through what those costs of delayed retirement might be. And so as we think about, again, um, those people who have not maybe saved enough or are not feeling confident in the way in which they are approaching retirement, we get to this place where uh, we have something called the reluctant retiree. So who is that reluctant retiree? You know, maybe it's the person who's 63, 64, they're kind of nearing in to um, hitting what they had always dreamed about as 65 being the day that they were going to uh, retire from their job and go off and live their life in retirement. Um, but maybe they haven't saved enough or maybe they're concerned that that money is just not there in order to help them um, to get to and through upwards of that 30 years of planning that they had not successfully planned for. And so what happens? They stay at their desk and they're not ready to retire. And so what we have here is the shift in that delaying of the retirement. Um, and as we look at what that means for an employer, you're looking at costs that are upwards of $750,000 for those people staying at their desks for one, three, and five years post when it was anticipated due to the additional costs associated with the benefit spend, et cetera, for those employees, which is really, really meaningful dollars as we think about the participants and the plan sponsors that we're looking to serve who are ultimately looking to run their business and are not looking for the added cost. So what can we be doing to help to get people to that place of retirement? Hey, Jessica, I got a quick question for you before we move on. Absolutely. So the question in the uh, questions is, where did you come up with the 50K per year as a cost for retirement delayed per employee? Do you have any information on that? 
Um, so the information from the figures here is coming from the um, the uh, there's a study from USI for the delayed retirement um, impacting the bottom line for the organization that came out in October of 2021. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. And all of that source material is listed to specific within the slides. But if there's any additional questions on that, just let me know. Thank you. Of course. Um, and so, you know, if, as we think about things um, and, you know, fast forwarding, people used to offer a benefit because it was the right thing to do. Now we're thinking about recruiting and retaining employees in the workforce. And so we think about what is it really that an employer is looking to accomplish? Are they looking to simply offer a retirement savings plan and look to check the box um, to say, we've got a tax preferential savings plan. We want to make sure that we're offering this benefit to remain competitive in the marketplace. It's going to simply be focused on accumulating that benefit uh, during the working years with some traditional investment options included within. And then ultimately, we're going to reach that place where somebody's ready to retire and you know the employer says, good luck. I hope that you've amassed the uh, benefits that you're looking to um, in order to enter into retirement and do that successfully. Alternatively, we have the uh, option of offering what is a true retirement plan. And if we think about it right now in today's statistics, what's wild to think about is that so many people out there, um, particularly the younger working population, if you look at a number of different studies that are out in the marketplace, um, it's somewhere between 60 to 70 percent based off of the studies that we've seen, um, one of them coming from the TIA Institute. Um, but upwards of 69 percent of the younger working generation believes that their retirement plan offers a guaranteed component to it. And so we think about what you're offering in the marketplace, and then we think about what it means to offer that true retirement plan, a plan that is not only looking to work through those accumulation years to help people save up that nest egg, but then also thinking about how it impacts them through those accumulation years as they're entering into retirement and they're beyond. Thinking about what we can be doing to provide that lifetime income guarantee, um, as well as integrating the broader holistic wellness for the organization, the participants that it serves. And so that brings us to the role that a consultant can play in this conversation with your clients and just simply starting that conversation. So thinking about things like asking your, your plan sponsor, what type of plan do you want to be offering it? Do you want to be offering a savings plan? Because that might work for some people. Um, they may want to just get people um, saving while they're in the plan and say, you know, good luck, good riddance. Um, and uh, you know, get people out of the plan and and um, continue to manage it that way. Alternatively, um, there are other plan sponsors that are out there that maybe hold a more maternalistic or paternalistic view and say that they want to make sure that they're caring for those employees and that they're getting them to and through retirement with that true holistic retirement plan. Thinking about how will you define or maybe redefine what the measurements of success are for the plan. Oftentimes, a plan gets put in place by a sponsor and. If you fast forward, maybe there's been some committee turnover, there's been um, some changes at the top of the house or in the broader business strategy, and why somebody started offering a plan to why they're offering it today might be two totally different reasons. And so thinking about what are those measurements for defining and redefining that success of the retirement plan or the savings plan that's in place for that sponsor. Also thinking about the alignment for the fiduciary responsibilities across the committee and making sure that they're taking into consideration all of the various um, benefits that are out there and thinking about the different investment options that are availed to their participants. Um, again, if I go back to the statistic of people thinking about what they have in a plan, when you put that fiduciary hat on and we think about what it means for a plan sponsor, um, do we want to make sure that we're offering people the benefit that they believe that they had in their retirement plan? So making sure that you've got that alignment. We also want to think about how they're going to potentially optimize that client communication strategy, which is so critically important. We oftentimes talk about what the engagement is 
amongst those participants that we serve. And I think that that's the piece of it, of really trying to think through some of uh, the broad-based simplistic language that we can be employing um, and how we can reach people because, you know, different workforces have different types of demands. Some are in, you know, one location. There's others that are disparate and spread out across the country. Um, some that are working all day, perhaps in a factory, as you think about it, and they might not have access to a computer while they're working. Um, and so what are going to be the most effective ways in order to reach those associates within an organization? And then thinking, too, about how lifetime income aligns with the inv existing investment structure of the plan as we think back to what's being offered um, and where there's opportunities to potentially enhance that offering. And then finally, thinking about the broader considerations that plan sponsors might need to make uh, in partnership with you um, in providing some of the guidance relative to amending plan documents, thinking about the um, investment policy statement and ensuring that there's alignment should you look to future forward some of the retirement plan benefits to your clients. So getting into the crux of it, let's talk a little bit more about knowing the lifetime income landscape. And we like to break this down really into thinking about things from two different buckets, one of them being on the side that emphasizes liquidity. So in that space, we see more by way of uh, systematic withdrawals, which have typically been just taking your money outside of the plan um, to manage payouts, guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefits, providing that liquidity to the sponsor. And then fast forwarding to the other side of the house, which is really emphasizing more of that longevity risk protection where you have a true um, insurance mechanism in place to protect um, against longevity with a deferred fixed annuity, a deferred income annuity, or a qualified longevity annuity contract, uh, better known uh, as we like to speak in acronym soup as the QLAC. So want to jump into just some of the broad-based considerations as to why a plan sponsor might think about offering some of these various options that are available in the marketplace. So if we look at the side of liquidity, um, so thinking about just some of the benefits and drawbacks of the various uh, products in the marketplace, and I'm really just focusing in on uh, product type here, um, but thinking about the method of withdrawing funds from the investment account um, here with a systematic withdrawal. So you're just taking um, payments. Um, and I was actually floored um, to see the statistic that was actually presented um, back at the RPAG summit um, at one of the sessions that I think over 42% of plans, I believe, was the, st the statistic um, that doesn't even have systematic withdrawals um, available as a feature within their plan document. And so thinking through that piece of it of just allowing people to take out money similar to the way in which um, they would receive a paycheck, um, even there, there's options and opportunity to continue to enhance the plan design that we're offering rather than forcing people into that lump sum. Um, and then thinking about things like um, the benefits and the drawbacks from that. So, um, you know, the great piece of that is that a participant's going to have full access to their account value. They've got the potential for growth in retirement. Um, and then as we start to think about some of the drawbacks tied to it is that you are going to have that exposure to the market volatility. Um, and so it's critically important to think about uh, the balance of um, what is in somebody's account as they're entering to nearing uh, retirement. Um, also thinking about um, that their account value itself, if they haven't saved enough or accumulated enough, or they run into a scenario in the marketplace um, like what we saw um, back in 2022, um, where there's nowhere to hide. Um, as we think about that, like what does that do as far as impacting the overall dollars that a participant might have available to them um, during their retirement years? So they have that risk that they might run out of money. Um, and again, on this side of the house, we don't see any insurance protection or guarantees associated. Similarly, we see with managed payout funds, um, difference really being that you're entering into more of a professionally managed investment um, that's going to provide that regular income payment to investors. Um, we do see that payments can fluctuate. They're not guaranteed. Um, so that is a feature of um, what we see with managed payouts. From the benefits perspective, you do have an actively managed account. So there is somebody who is out there that is managing your investment. So as you sit in that advisory seat, or if you think about um, maybe the various providers that are out in the marketplace that are offering this, it is professionally managed money. Um, participants do uh, hold on to full access to their account balance. 
and they have the potential for the growth and the investment. Um, but as we think about some of the drawbacks that could be associated, there's the potential that there's some high fees that are associated with that uh, professional management of the money. If we think about that balance, it's also still exposed to market volatility. Uh, and again, similar to systematic withdrawals, run the risk of running out of money in retirement. Um, and again, we focus in here that there is no insurance protection or guarantee on the account balance. And then we move into what I'd kind of put into a hybrid bucket with the guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit um, and thinking through that piece of it. So here we start to see um, a, a benefit that has a specified percentage of withdrawal um, that a participant can um, take from their accumulated balance, which is invested in an underlying portfolio. And as we think about that, once that balance that they hold is depleted, um, so once somebody, a participant, takes their dollars that they have saved in the retirement plan, um, once they have fully drawn down their balance of their um, savings, it is then that the provider starts to pay that guaranteed payout for life. So if you think about it, it's that's when the insurance piece really kicks in. So you're paying for a benefit to ensure that that payment will be there for you at the time that your own money runs out. And so if we think about the benefits and the drawbacks of that, participants have full access to their account balance. So um, the piece for, the, for that is that you know, it's not locked up and that they can access it. Um, there is potential that they may have a minimum guaranteed return while they're saving for retirement. Um, and um, again, typically with these, we see that there is the guaranteed income component for life that is available to participants. Um, with that comes potentially higher fees uh, in the marketplace. We've seen everything from probably about 25 to 130 basis points of additional fee um, that is associated with offering this type of benefit in the marketplace. Um, and uh, coming from somebody I used to, I used to represent and distribute uh, the guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit in the marketplace. Um, and just understanding that it's complicated um, and every product has different features um, that need to get unpacked. And so thinking just about some of the rules and provisions that are tied to these um, various solutions in the marketplace and how we can dissect that. And again, getting back to the value and the importance of where an advisor comes in is how do we effectively communicate that benefit to the plan sponsor audience? So thinking about that piece of it. Um, and then the other piece is that if somebody, uh, you know, we talk about and tout the the um, liquid ability for a participant to be able to access their money in retirement. Um, and so from that perspective, should somebody need to access that money and they decide to take a withdrawal from their plan, that excess withdrawal from the plan is going to ultimately work to reduce the income benefits that are associated tied to that account balance. Now we're going to take a shift into the uh, side of the house that's op uh, an option for broad, more broadly emphasizing the longevity protection in the marketplace. So here enters uh, the deferred fixed annuity. And so if I think about, um, you know, as an example, what we on the Nuveen side of the house and TIAA are bringing to the table in partnership with RPAG um, as the lifetime income provider um, within some of the most recent solutions that have rolled out, we are looking at a deferred fixed annuity. So as we think about that, uh, there is a guaranteed return during the accumulation of a participant's journey within the plan. So as they're saving for money, they are guaranteed a rate of return. Uh, and then as we move forward into um, that retirement phase, the uh, option for guaranteed lifetime income during retirement is available to them. If we think about some of the benefits and the drawbacks tied to a deferred fixed annuity, um, one of the benefits that we see is the potential for lower portfolio fees and market volatility. Um, so with the deferred fixed annuity, we're looking at a spread product, which is ultimately able to help to potentially lower the portfolio fee that's associated. And as we think about what this is really doing is it's a volatility damper within the investment construct. And so from that perspective, as we look at market volatility, what we see is that over the long term, during the accumulation phase, we're looking at bond-like returns with money market-like volatility. And so again, that ability to reach those um, bond-like yields over the long term um, with that lessened volatility. Uh, 
um, with these types of uh, benefits during the accumulation years, you have full access to your account value. So before you actually exercise an annuity benefit, the account is fully liquid to a participant. Um, again, the guaranteed savings while um, you are the guaranteed re returns while saving for retirement. And then thinking about that potential, um, particularly with um, the product that we have in market, is bringing um, the potential for increases in income payments in retirement and thereafter based off of our uh, sharing the profits approach in the marketplace and offering that guaranteed income for life. As we think about some of the drawbacks, um, you know, where you look at these products, um, when you make the decision to annuitize, those annuitized assets, um, that's what we call an irrevocable decision. And so as a participant makes a decision to turn on that annuity benefit, um, in other words, trade that money in for the promise from the insurance company to pay that benefit for life, the ability for the participant to access those dollars goes away. And so they lose that liquidity benefit for the portion of the investment that is annuitized. And I think that one of the misnomers um, that I've seen in this space is that you do not have to, or nor are you required to annuitize your entirety of your balance. You have the ability to annuitize a portion of your savings in order to make sure that you can kind of get the best of both worlds in, in, in maintaining that full access to your account value for the amounts that are not annuitized. And then thinking about how can you take some of that risk off of the table um, in annuitizing to help to cover those fixed income uh, expenses in retirement. And then I think that the other piece of it is, as as you see in the title of it, it's a fixed annuity. Um, so you're looking at fixed returns. So as you think about some of the drawbacks, um, particularly if you are in a, um, a heavy equity uh, rich environment, there's going to be less upside potential for those equity linked investment uh, instruments that are out in the marketplace to continue to drive some of that growth, uh, our growth in the market. Um, again, thinking through that fixed income component being really what's offered from the deferred fixed annuity. Um, if we fast forward to the deferred income annuity, a lot of the similar features and benefits um, is that really you're thinking about um, you're paying a premium um, in order to get a future benefit. And so that could be a variable annuity, that could be a fixed annuity. Um, as you think about it. And what it does is it provides that guaranteed income at a future date for a participant. So different is that you don't have that guaranteed growth throughout per se, um, but you've got the potential for the lower port portfolio fees and market volatility. Um, and then you've got the higher payout rate potential at retirement. So think about these things like a single premium immediate annuity, um, things like that come into play. You've got the guaranteed income for life um, as a participant, um, thinks about drawbacks for these types of solutions in the marketplace. Um, you've got things like um, the potential that they lose liquidity, again, if they go and move to annuitize the benefits. Um, additionally, as you think about um, the ability to withdraw the balance before um, those payments begin with a deferred income annuity, that feature does not exist. So there's a little bit of a nuance between a deferred fixed annuity and that deferred income annuity where you're paying dollars today for that future guaranteed benefit tomorrow. Um, and then fast forward to the qualified longevity uh, annuity contract is really think about that as what I'd call more of the catastrophic insurance. So you're thinking about if you're hedging the benefit, uh, the if you live to age 80, 85, typically is when we see these kick in, that you're going to leverage your portfolio. And should you be living by the time you reach 80 or 85 years old, that's when you're going to see this fixed income or this fixed annuity kick in to provide the income benefit on the back end of your life to protect for that longevity. So it's a deferred longevity risk, if you will. So we think about the extended tax deferral as a benefit of that. You're protected against that market volatility and potential for higher payout rates and the guaranteed income for life associated with that. And then as we start to think about some of the drawbacks that are tied to it, you've got the um, limited purchase amount tied to the product because there are some limitations there on how much you can insure, thinking about that longer deferral period and what that looks like and hedging the bet of whether or not you will live to that age or not. Um, and then if um, you do die, there is no death benefit that's typically associated. So any of those amounts that would be annuitized are lost if the investor passes before that income actually kicks in at age 80 or beyond. Um, and then also um, there's no ability to withdraw balances before payments begin. And I see that there may be, Lee, I don't know if there's a question that we want to maybe take a pause and, and address here for the audience. 
Yes, perfect timing. Um, got a question in the Q&A. Is there a tool available to determine how much a participant would need to annuitize in order to meet their monthly retirement income needs? There are many a tools that are actually coming to market um, uh, as it relates to um, what people can be utilizing. And I think it depends on the type of benefit. Um, I would point to uh, specifically within TIAA, I know that we have on the TIA and Nuveen side calculators that are available so that you can put in the amount um, that is saved at retirement. And then it shows you um, what the illustrative example is of what that payout would be um, at the time that somebody retires. So you can take and play with some of those balances, retirement age figures like that to determine um, what that would really turn into by way of an income stream for life. Does that help to address the question? Yes, that's perfect. Thank you. And I would also share that I'm certain that uh, our friends here at RPG are uh, constantly uh, in in the mix of continuing to reinvent and to uh, to add new features and benefits to the various tools that are available in the marketplace. So um, as it relates to the broader retirement income evaluation tools that are in the marketplace, I think that it's important to recognize um, that those things will continue to evolve. Um, and to, you know, as we think about it, um, some of the features that we have available tied to the solutions that we've brought to market um, are the ability for us to tap into what we call our lifetime income consultants. And so if somebody is actually saving for retirement um, and they are at the place where they have one of the products in place um, and they say we're looking to potentially annuitize a portion of our balance, uh, what that team does is helps to run illustrations to show them exactly what the various options are in the marketplace um, that are available to them, whether that be a single life annuity, thinking about maybe a joint and survivor, if it's you and your spouse, or maybe adding on a guaranteed certain period for that benefit to ensure that, you know, should you look to annuitize and potentially um want to think about, well, I'm not sure. Uh, nobody has that magic eight ball to know if you're going to be living five, 10, 15 years down the road. We want to protect against that. Um, we protect all the other big things in our lives, like our houses, our cars, our health. Um, why not look to protect our biggest nest egg that we've saved throughout our working years? Um, but we think about that um, and they're able to provide the illustrations to show exactly how much you would see by way of payout and take on pay before making any type of decision to move to annuitize a benefit. Any other questions, Leah? Are we good to keep going? Um, let's see. I think someone might have missed it, but um, just wanted to kind of reconfirm. But um, is Nuveen providing a plan annuity option? <laughs> yeah. So um, in partnership with RPAG. Um, and FlexPath, we have launched uh, a couple different solutions, soon to be three different solutions that are in the marketplace. Um, the first that we have out and available in the market is the Great Gray American Funds Income Series, um, which incorporates the um, Nuveen TIAA uh, Secure Income Account, which is embedded within the glide path of the target date structure. Um, additionally, um, so that's an active uh, target date series that is now available in market. Additionally, uh, we also launched the index select income series, um, which incorporates the secure income account, which is our deferred fixed annuity again, within um, the asset allocation of, of the target date. Um, and so that is a passive solution that's available in the marketplace. And at the RPAG summit here um, just a couple of weeks ago, or just getting that was last week. It feels like it was a couple of weeks ago at this point, but last week um, at the RPAG summit, uh, it was announced that there is a third solution um, with the Putnam uh, Retirement Income Advantage uh, that is coming to the marketplace here later this year. Um, so a preview into that, which will be another active series um, that will be offering the secure income account and deferred fixed annuity embedded within the target date structure. And all of those products operate um, just like a target date fund that you have come to know um, and understand and participants have as well in order to um, provide that asset management um, throughout the glide path. And, uh, you know, once a participant gets to that stage where they're looking to retire, they have that option, that obligation 
to annuitize the benefit if they want. If they don't, um, they uh, have the option to roll out of the plan, um, to transfer the benefits, to let it ride. Um, they could even leverage taking systematic withdrawals and not ever um, exercising that annuity benefit um, without any additional fees associated with that. So hopefully that helps to answer that question. Thank you. Of course. Um, and, you know, so I just one of the things that I also want to hit on is over time, I think that annuities have gotten uh, a bad rap uh, as we think about it more broad, broadly in the marketplace. Um, and as we think about some of the, I'll call it the myth versus reality, I think that it's important to hone in on some of, of these items. So uh, as we think about annuities, so myth out there that annuities are restrictive, that there's little or no flexibility. Um, and the reality of the situation is tied to that, that um, annuities and particularly the products that we've designed and brought to market um, to serve the broader uh, defined contribution landscape offer a range of these options that can be used to diversify a retirement income plan for a participant, offering things like partial annuitization, not even thinking about annuitizing, potentially rolling over that asset. Um, so there's tons of flexibility that is built into that. Um, and it is not a you must annuitize and it's an irrevocable decision and you don't have that uh, option available to you. Um, and, you know, that leads to that second point. It's not all or nothing. Um, a lot of times people think that it is all or nothing, that you have to do the whole thing or nothing. Um, in fact, with our solutions, you can annuitize as little um, as the if, whether it's the total of your balance or um, just ten thousand dollars of that balance in order to create that income stream for life. And so um, thinking about that, if you've got a participant who's got hundreds of thousands of dollars that saved they can, you know, parse out and figure out what it means to live in retirement and figure out what that next step looks like for them in order to realize what dollars they really need um, to live on. And then the other piece that's not guaranteed, um, they can actually leverage to live their life. They could potentially think about increasing some of um, the equity exposure within because they have that guaranteed piece to rely upon as well. And so it offers you as the advisor a ton of opportunity to engage with your clients and particularly on the wealth side as to what they can be doing from a portfolio construction perspective uh, to maximize the investment uh, with you. Um, and then I think that the other piece of it too is just thinking about um, this concept that the employee is going to lose the total estate value that they have. Um, and again, I point to the multitude of optionality that's tied to the annuities. And I hit on it a little bit before, but as we think about employees having um, all of those options available to them, you could take out a single life annuity, you could take out a joint and survivor to cover yourself and a spouse. You could think about adding on a guaranteed certain benefit so that the period of payments will continue. So as an example, if I chose a 10 year period, certain, I would be guaranteed to receive those annuity payments for 10 years. So even if I had died three years into it, I would still have those benefits going to my beneficiary for the next 10 years that was guaranteed in that period for those benefits that were turned over um, into the annuity. And if we start to take a, a closer look at what we've really seen resonating and working in the marketplace, um, what we've found is that simple wins. And so from that perspective, thinking about where is their option to integrate these lifetime income solutions into a retirement in, uh, into a retirement menu um, while giving people the optionality that they need uh, to make those decisions. And really thinking about as we look at the broader landscape and where we've seen assets flowing over the past several years, particularly as we think about the Pension Protection Act in 2006 and what we've seen by way of growth in the marketplace of this eight to nine trillion dollar um, benefits before us, that from that perspective, we want to think about like what people understand, what has been resonating in the market and keep it simple for people so that when they look to uh, adopt these lifetime income solutions in the marketplace, it's embedded in a familiar structure to them. So we think about things like a target date fund, like I mentioned with the solutions that we've rolled out in partnership with FlexPath and RPAG, um, or even thinking about it in a managed account structure um, and leveraging that with professionally managed money as well. Now, the last piece of this that I think is critically important, and as I mentioned, I think is where there's an opportunity for you as the advisors to really help to drive the narrative is how you engage within partic with participants along the journey. 
Um, and so just wanted to share out some of the key insights. And I hit on this statistic before um, with that uh, startling to me statistic of 69% of young adults thinking that their retirement plan includes a guaranteed minimum income after they retired. So 69% of young adults think that they're getting a benefit. Let's make sure that we're taking on our fiduciary responsibility to ensure that we're providing to uh, a participant in a plan sponsor a benefit that their employees may think that they already have. And so as we think about it, we want to really make sure that we're keeping that participant top of mind um, when making those major changes to a retirement program. We found that using really clean and simple language when educating the workforce is critical um, and speaking to things like you've got an equity component, you've got a fixed income component or bonds and stocks, right? Like just how do we think about really simplifying a message and saying, okay, here we are and we're going to offer you a guaranteed paycheck for life. Employees also want to know that they have the um, security of this retirement income, um, and they're going to want to know how much they have. And so if you think about it, we we all think about how we pay bills, right? On a month-to-month -month basis, you know if you have a mortgage, what your mortgage payment is, you know what your utilities cost, you know what your food expenses relatively are going to look like. And so as we think about those fixed costs, people think about that by way of their take-home pay. And so we want to make sure that we're breaking it down in a way that's simple for people to understand. And then I'd also add to that, too, that we're, we're thinking about these lifetime income solutions. It's really to help to bridge what is the expectations um, to their reality. And so um, there's certainly some of the things that we've learned with the messaging that's out in the marketplace um, that different plan sponsors are certainly going to have different needs in the way in which they reach their workforce. I talked about that, whether there's a disparate workforce or maybe something that's, uh, you know, more centered in one office location and the way in which we reach those participants is going to matter. Um, we want to start that conversation, too, at the beginning of employment. Oftentimes, people wait too long to engage with people about what their retirement is going to look like because we can't imagine what our future self looks like. But we need to start getting people thinking about what that looks like for them and the life that they're going to want to live when they reach that retirement age. And so just thinking about starting that conversation with them at the beginning of their employment and hitting them at times along the journey, whether it's the new hire onboarding, thinking about, um, you know, if they're entering into a brand new workforce, um, or if there may be somebody who exited the workforce and they were on an extended leave and maybe they came back to the workforce and what that means for them and how you can play that critical role in helping them uh, to understand what they need to amass in order to reach their retirement readiness. Um, also, just as it relates to the educational resources, making sure that we speak to employees at where they are in their career. So um, again, if you are earlier on in your career, you're probably not thinking about retirement just yet. Um, but what are the ways in which we can reach people with their life stages um, in, in order to get them to start thinking about that um, and making sure that the communication tied to this is an ongoing process and should occur throughout that entire lifespan and life cycle of the participant within the plan. Um, and so, you know, some of the key lessons that we've learned is just along, um, you know, how do you bring participants along on this journey with you? What we've learned is that people tend to respond best to positive message messaging, to aspirational language. We don't want to scare people or like throw too many of these risks at them that we know exist. Um, but how do we help people to really think about things from that positive lens, lens and demonstrate to them how those lifetime income streams are going to come into the means as the end uh, to the end of what they've earned and deserve as they enter into their retirement years and beyond? Um, again, using that familiar language, uh, the income paycheck for life. Um, are often words that have tested really well with some of the key markets and demographics that have been um, tested on the TIAA side of the house, um, recognizing that we've done it in the um, not-for-profit market for over 100 years. Um, we've tested those audiences and really tried to understand what's resonating with the marketplace. And again, words like income, paycheck, really helps people to wrap their minds around what they're going to receive. So once their paycheck stop, this paycheck kicks in. Um, and then thinking, too, about just those concepts that they're going to hear throughout their career so that we leverage that familiar language, that familiar structure of investment for them to lean into. And so I will um, bring you back to, again, just thinking about the broader TIA and Nuveen story. Um, when the founding of our company happened um, back in 1918, Andrew Carnegie um, was the funding parent of the company uh, for TIAA to 
And he built the company specifically to provide that guaranteed retirement income solution to educators because he saw that there was a need in the marketplace. And today, as we think and fast forward to what we are bringing to market, um, we are coming to you with an abundance of strength. And so as we think about it, uh, TIA stands as the amongst the highest rated insurance companies out there. We have over a 300 or close to a $300 billion uh, general account backing these guarantees um, with some of the highest crediting ratings amongst the insurance companies out there, as I mentioned. Um, and the other piece of it, too, is um, just thinking about the statutory capital that we hold back. And so we hold um, next to five times the statutory capital that's required in order to make sure that we can realize those payments. Um, and because of our not-for-profit structure at the top of the house, um, we are able to pass back um, any of that profit to our annuitants by way of higher payouts in retirement. And again, all of those solutions offered to you within um, these FlexPath uh, co-manufactured solutions that have come to market, available today on the Empower record keeping platform. Um, and so we encourage you to reach out to your local wholesaler uh, within the Nuveen organization in order to learn a little bit more uh, about the solutions that we have available in market. Um, and as we also think about just more uh, broadly, what are the next steps that you should be taking? I think that it is incumbent that you um, really look to examine the plan menus and consider all of the evolving options that are out there in the marketplace as it relates to guaranteed lifetime income. We've heard this before, but if you are not out there and talking to your clients about this, there is somebody out there. And I know many of those somebody's out there that are having the conversations today in order to drive that conversation and look to build their book of business. Um, and so it's really critically important that you at least get that solid understanding of the marketplace and um, that you're evaluating um, the with detail um, and care of the different options and determining whether or not those right solutions are available for the workforces that you're serving. Um, and will we be able to really help to get people to and through retirement with these offerings in the marketplace? Um, I'd encourage you to look at the cost of the solutions and the underlying complexities and how we think about communicating said complexities and simplifying that message to the participant. Again, uh, you know, focusing back in on uh, embedding it into something that the participants are already familiar with, like a target date structure or a custom model portfolio. And then also to thinking about the portability of these solutions. Um, we saw it come out of Secure One again, that they have the ability to port these solutions to an IRA should it not be available um, during a record keeper transition from one record keeper to another or should a plan terminate so that a participant does not lose their access to the lifetime income benefits that they have accumulated. And so um, I leave you with those as next steps. Um, I also wanted to point to some of the uh, advisor value added resources that we have on the Nuveen side of the house. Um, and so if anybody is interested in the broader pieces, um, we have our next advisor magazine, um, which provides insights from our leading retirement plan advisors in the marketplace around how you broach the conversation around retirement income, some of the needs and considerations, just how to get the conversation started, things of that nature. And um, so you can dig into the first of that publication to really learn more about having the conversation with your clients. Additionally, um, we've got a bunch of topics that are in our next publication, which is um, our uh, our flagship publication in the marketplace, which really covers tons of the top uh, co topics of conversation in the marketplace um, relative to the defined contribution plan. We have a new issue that is rolling out here shortly, um, which we're super excited to share out with you. Uh, additionally, I encourage you to visit our Benefits 2.0 hub to learn about the various research programs that are available in the marketplace. Um, and then as it relates to the advisor education, um, we are a sponsor of the uh, NAPA Retirement Income Certification Program, um, and we have a special code for our partners. So should you be interested in sitting through that certification program to get yourself more broadly educated on the solutions available in the marketplace and your role as an advisor in that, we are happy to provide that code for you. Please don't hesitate to reach out to myself or your local regional wholesaler in order to gain access to that. Coming next year is going to be the Plan Sponsor Council of America Retirement Income Certification for Plan Sponsors, as well as a number of educational presentations. We're happy to walk through a landscape of the solutions and dig in more specifically to the actual products that are out in the marketplace and help you to digest those. Um, and I'd also finally point you to 
our practice management toolkit. So we've got the Nuveen Lifetime Income Toolkit, which is out there in the marketplace. Um, and the website we can share out with you as well following this presentation. Um, and that includes all of the advisor resources and it's client ready contact uh, content. It is not branded by Nuveen. Um, it is stuff that you can absolutely take and just leverage. So there are sample email templates that you can download. There are presentations, there are articles that you can share out with your plan sponsors as you're looking to engage in this conversation. And we've broken it out into multiple steps for you to be able to navigate those conversations with your sponsors. And if you want to hear from some folks who have been at this and are leading the charge in lifetime income, we also have a video series um, that gathers their perspectives in the marketplace. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Jessica, once again. Um, if you have any questions or maybe you don't know um, anyone on the Nuveen side or the TIAA side, please reach out to us at uh, support at RPA. Oh, perfect. Support at rpag.com as well. Um, we also have the contact and the uh, contact as well um, for the Nuveen team. But either one of us will get you to the right people. So thank you so and much. I'm always available too, if anybody needs any help. So don't hesitate to reach out. Really appreciate the opportunity and the partnership um, and look forward to continuing to grow with you guys and help you build your business in the marketplace. Mm -hmm.